Rub up your engines! Here I'm going to show you how to fix a car that's shaking when you're going on highway speeds. Now in this case when you're 50, 60 miles an hour, it's not the steering wheel that's shaking. It's the entire vehicle has a shake, especially more in the back. Now shaking can be caused by all kinds of things. High rods, control arms that have worn out bushing so they wobble back and forth. But in this case, it doesn't seem to be in the front because if it was a worn front end part or a bad front tire, when it was shaking, the steering wheel itself would be shaking because you turn the front steering wheels. But in this case, it's not the steering wheel that's shaking it. It's stable. It's the whole vehicle has a shake to it. So that leads me to conclude there's a problem in the back of the car. So let's check the suspension. So we'll jack it up and get a jack stand. Safety first, we don't want to be squashed. Now first we'll check for suspension work. We'll grab it here. Does it have play back and forth? No. Then we check it here. Six o'clock at noon, there's no play here. Then we'll do the same thing here. No play, no play. We spin it around. If the tire had been out around, you'd see a lump as it goes around, lumpa, lumpa, lumpa. So there doesn't seem anything physically wrong. Well, something's gonna make it check. So first, let's check the tire pressure. If it's way off one side or the other, that'll make the car sway and shake. Well, check that. All right, as we can see here, it says 31 and a half pounds. So let's go to the other side. That says 31 and a half pounds too. So it's not the tire pressure. So let's spin it around, see if it's warped. It's not warped or out around, but here I'm gonna cheat because this is my son's wife's car. I know that a week ago, they bought a brand new right rear tire because the old one was worn out. So I'm assuming, and I see this all the time, the guys at the discount auto parts store did not balance the tire correctly. The faster it goes, the more out of balance. So it will shake at highway speeds and it will shake the whole body of the car because it's in the back, not the front where it would make the steering wheel shake. So let's take the tire off. These electric impacts are fine for taking tires off. And off it goes. Now most guys are gonna go to a tire store and get a bounce, but I like doing things myself. I bought this tire bouncer years ago at Harbor Freight Tools for like 80 bucks. They work perfectly fine if you know how to operate them. Now you need a level surface. Concrete is level, but not perfect enough. So I got a nice flat board and we wanna put the base on the flat board so it doesn't rock back and forth. There's a hole that fits right on this needle here. Dig it in the hole first. Now it's in the hole exactly an air. Now it's spinning perfectly. Now as you look on the top, you can see a bubble balance and you want the bubble to be exactly in the middle. Now this one's not exactly in the middle, so I got a little screwdriver here and I adjust the screws here until as you can see now, smack dab in the middle. So I'll bring the tire over and it's got a little knob in here. So you got to take that out. So it'll fit on a machine. That's right on the cone as you'll see. Now we'll see if the guys at the tire store knew what they were doing. And I kind of doubt it. You can see the bubble is way out of the circle now. Fortunately, I see this all the time. Idiots working at tire store chains, not caring what they do. Who knows if they even balanced it. A pretty new tire, it's a week old. Let's look at the weights that are on it. One, it's completely balanced strong, but you can see it's got metal weights here and weights here. I'm assuming the idiots at tire place put those inside weights on and didn't even look to see that it had the weights on the rim already the ones that you glue on. He probably missed that entirely because the weights on the outside look new, but the weights on the inside look like they've been there forever. So these guys were absolute morons. We gotta take everything off and start over. So we gotta remove these weights. They got little holes on the side here. You can get them from the inside. Hit them with a little chisel. Out it comes. There's one. And we'll do the other one. Now you can grab it, pull that off. Then we have to remove the inner weights. They got weights all over the place here. Then we'll take the other side off. Some idiot worked on this car. Now modern tires are generally pretty well made. They rarely need that much weight. Well, some idiot was working on this car. Now before we do anything else, we're gonna put it back on a balance and see what it's like with no weights at all. Here we go. Now if you look, all the weights are gone. 
There they are in the ground. And now where is it? Smack dab in the middle. Now when I was a young mechanic, my father's corner technical gas station, we had one of these only it wasn't mobile, it was bolted to the floor. And that's how we balanced tires. Today people I say you gotta dynamically balance them. You could do this if you want, and if it doesn't shake, we knew it was way off balance anyways. But if it still has a little and it isn't completely perfect, then take it to a tire store and explain this has been done on a bubble balance. Could you make it perfect with your spinning balance? But with one of these machines, you can see how far off it is. And if, like in a case of my son's wife's car, it was shaking after they put the tire on, I pretty well knew it was that tire in the first place. You just put it on a machine and say this thing's way off balance, fix it. We're not taking it back to them because they're idiots. Why would you go back to a place full of incompetent mechanics? I certainly wouldn't. So now we'll put the tire back on. And there's another tip electric impact wrenches. <laughs> fine for taking them off, but when you put them on, you want to use a torque wrench so you don't warp things. Taking off you don't care, but putting on is more important. Put the tire on, line up the tire, fix on with the lug nuts on. Start with two, one on the top, one on the bottom. You get a socket and line it up better here, then start on the opposite side, and you'll have more room to play with. And sometimes you can got to wiggle the wheel a little so it lines up in the hole like it just did. Then get inside the car, put on the emergency brake because that'll keep the wheel from spinning. Then you get a torque wrench, and in this case, it's 77 foot-pounds of torque. You just keep turning it till it goes to 77. That's 70, one, two, three, four, five, six, 77. Then you can snug these two up, first get them snug, then you do them to the torque, which you turn them until it clicks. Okay, that one's done. That one's done. Then we'll torque the other three. If you torque it wrong, you can warp the rotor or the axle, and then it will also shake because it's not tightened evenly. If it's too loose, it'll fall off, and if it's too tight, you can wreck things. So it's a good idea to get a torque wrench to put them on correctly, and not use an electric or an air impact. These are great for taking them off, not for putting them back on. First we spin them on, get them all on so they're snug, then torque them on. And there's a hole, we forgot to put that back in. That's just a cover. So let's let the jack down slowly. Down it goes, get out of the way. And away we go for the road test. Off to the highway to test it out. And here we go. Step on the gas a little. We're doing 65. And guess what? It's not shaking anymore. So that fixed. But let's say you took them off and the tire was out of balance anyway. Then you just get the weights and you put them on the inside of the wheel evenly on each side until the bubble is set perfectly. And then it's fixed. But this didn't even need balancing. So what we learned today? Two things. One, if your car is shaking, it's not the steering wheel, but the whole car. It's often in the back wheels. And two, don't trust the idiots that work at a lot of these discount tire stores. They don't know what they're doing. They don't care what they're doing. Don't think they're going to balance your tires right. If you get new tires put on at a store, and then you take your car out on the highway and it's shaking and it wasn't before, you'll know it was them. I'll fix it myself. That's why I got that little bouncer. But if not, go back and yell at them. But if you have to go back and yell at them, my advice is make them fix it till it's right then never go back and go somewhere else. Now I give away free advice all the time here. And today, I'm gonna give away a free product. This is one of these mirrors that's got both forward looking and a backup mirror on it if you wanna hook up the backup mirror. To have a chance to win, place a clean, non-offensive comments on the YouTube comments below. And a win will be chosen randomly by computer. They clip over your regular rear view mirrors. You got a camera in the front, and if you wanna hook up the back one, it's got a back camera for it too. And here's some bonus questions and answers. What do you think of a 03 Lexus South 430 with 136,000 miles for 3K pulling a homemade trailer of 1,500 pounds, 1,000 miles a week? Any issues on it? That baby has an interference engine. That age and that mileage, you'd have to put a timing belt on. Most mechanics are going to charge close to 1,000 bucks for doing that. Realize the luxury car's not really made for towing stuff 1,000 miles a week. You're looking for a different kind of vehicle. I would not buy that to tow stuff, to top it all off. It's a V8 Lexus. They make great cars, but as they age, they're the most expensive of all the Toyota products to repair those V8 ones. I'll give you an example. I had a customer with one of those. The brake master stole their want. The part was $1,800. I couldn't get them AutoZone or any place because they didn't sell them. It was a unit with all kinds of computer stuff on it. So I would look for a different vehicle if you want to pull a trailer 1,000 miles a week. I would not buy that car and put 1,000 miles a week on it. It would be foolhardy. How do 
I fix an Impala Howling at about 45 miles an hour? My father-in-law's worked on cars, did bad bearing tests on the four tires, and said he can't tell that maybe it's coming from the transaxle. It's a 2013 Chevy Impala LTZ with 99,000 miles. The problem with wheel bearings are they start to howl when they start to wear. Often, they're not worn enough that you'll feel it. So let's say it's a front wheel bearing. When they're really worn, you can grab the wheel, go clunk a clunk a clunk a clunk and it's worn, you know it's worn. When they start to wear, they'll often howl before they have any physical work. If he jacked up and pulled on them, that's not a good test. Here's how I test them. I've got this device. It comes with four sending units. They're little transmitter stations with magnets on them. You stick them in various parts of the car. Then you sit in a vehicle while somebody else is driving, put on a set of headphones, and that connects to the receiver. And it's got four clicks, one, two, three, four, for each of the sensors. And you keep clicking one, two, three, four till you hear the noise the loudest. And that will pinpoint where the sound's coming from. And it could very well be a wheel bearing. If they don't make any noise, yes. And you think it's a transaxle front? Put the sending unit on the transaxle. And when he clicks to that number, if the headphones start howling, you know it's in the transaxle. And then my advice, get rid of that thing. It's not worth rebuilding the transaxle. The vehicle is not worth that kind of money. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.